Hey, this is Arna from Coding Blocks, and today I'm going to bring you five top tips uh, that are going to help you uh, as a fresh graduate or an intern who has recently joined a big corporate company. So I realized that uh, a lot of uh, our students at uh, Coding Blocks are in uh, their final year right now, or they have just completed college and uh, they are joining uh, some of these, you know, big uh, firms as fresh graduates and uh, I felt like we should uh, I should uh, make a little video on uh, some really uh, small tips that you can incorporate into your habits that will help you grow in this kind of a corporate environment so number one find a mentor this is very important uh, to be able to grow in a corporate environment uh, in the initial days it's great to have somebody who would be having your back okay and uh, how do you find a suitable mentor? So find somebody who wants to help you. Okay. Now you can find somebody who would have a soft corner for you. And ideally, if uh, there is somebody in uh, that company who is also a graduate from uh, your college, that's that's generally ideal. Or if you have somebody who is from the same city as you, or you know you find a personal connection in some other ways, uh, that's uh, really great because. Uh, the person whom you want uh, to be your mentor, you want to be able to comfortably ask uh, silly questions. You want to be able to very comfortably talk about things like uh, whether your manager is a, a nice guy or a bad guy. So like, you know, you want to have a person uh, with whom you can discuss uh, politically incorrect stuff without the risk of that person, uh, you know, complaining about you uh, to HR okay pretty simply that because uh, in the initial days you'd have a lot of, lot of questions you would uh, want to understand how well you're doing and uh, to do all of that it's great if you have uh, somebody as a mentor uh, within uh, the company and if somebody with whom you have prior connection or if that person has a soft corner for you that's the ideal uh, kind of person who can be a mentor for you okay the second very important thing is um, don't step on others toes okay what does this term mean don't step on other toes is uh, that when you get out of college and you're joining uh, a big company you have had uh, the experience of working on uh, group projects or you might have uh, even interned at a small startup and there's a lot of energy there and uh, everybody tries to do a lot of things there um, in bigger company where there is a lot of hierarchy and there's a lot of structure uh, people do not like excessive energy uh, and interfering with each other's work so if for example somebody has already picked up a certain issue or a feature and they're working on it and you also pick it up and do it before they are doing it's not considered as a good thing it's not considered as a good thing by the person whose work you did for them it will not be considered as a good thing by your manager as well because uh, you know you're not informing your manager uh, that that maybe you had extra time and in that you did some work that somebody else is doing and your manager could have maybe assigned you uh, some other work as well so a lot of times people bring in a lot of energy and they try to do things that they were not asked to do uh, this is something that uh, in a big corporate culture is something that you should try to uh, you should probably go and speak to your manager that you know I have more time I want to do something more challenging and uh, that's always better than uh, going out of your way and trying to do things that nobody asked you to do uh, especially if somebody else is doing it because that's exactly what stepping on somebody's uh, toes uh, is called okay always uh, talk to the person uh, if you have the slightest doubt that uh, the work that you're doing might come under that person's domain or it might be that person's responsibility so talk to that person ask them that if you can pick up that work would it be okay and then only do it okay third point really important uh, to prevent your early uh, professional career from getting derailed don't be an attention seeker now this is something that i have seen in a lot of students and i've been teaching for quite a while is that some people think that if they ask a lot of questions or have a lot of doubts or just simply raise their hands a lot of times uh, they become 
more visible and uh, people would think that they are smart or people would have them in their mind okay it happens there are a lot of those students who just ask a lot of doubts in the class just for the sake of asking doubts they think that probably i would see them in a more favorable way if i interact more with them or whatever is the you know philosophy behind it but uh, in a big corporate environment uh, it's going to be really detrimental to you so what are the things that you should not do so for example if you get stuck on any problem and you feel like you know that uh, you start it's a, it's a initial few days you try to build a project and it's not building you think that oh my god it's not building the readme is not complete i should go to slack or write an email to the entire team that hey this project does not build the documentation needs some update and maybe there is one step in the documentation that you failed uh, to read and that's why it's not building so whenever you're stuck with a problem or whenever you have an issue whenever you feel like that you need to get in touch with your manager and say that hey this does not work or hey i need help here or i don't understand how this works uh, or even if you want to talk to your uh, you know senior uh, engineer or a lead engineer in your team about it um, i suggest that you spend one working day okay one working day means you spend your 8 9 hours completely on trying to solve that problem on your own by on your own i mean you know you search your internal documentation your company might have an internal wiki um, or a portal and you google for that problem okay so uh, do that first and uh, because you know the when you when you come up with a question to your manager or to somebody senior in your team uh, the answer to that uh, the answer to your doubt should not be the first google search result or the answer to your doubt should not be uh, the read me of the project okay uh, it sh- it should be challenging enough for the person to whom you have asked the doubt because otherwise they feel that you know you are an, an irritating person because you just keep on asking you know questions that you can solve yourself okay that's really important number 4 on this list and uh, one of the very very important things for you to be able to grow in your professional career is communication and uh, why i'm saying this uh, very specifically for engineers is that um, i have uh, felt that a lot of times there is this feeling among uh, engineers developers programmers is that you know we are the geeky and the nerdy kind of people and uh, you know we really need to be good with the code that we write we don't need to be good with communication if we can't write a nicely worded email or if we can't you know uh, talk with a lot of technical terms Uh, with people that's fine because you know losers do that you know those who can't uh, go ahead in life technically they try to you know use elaborate words and they write long emails that's that's the kind of feeling i see in a lot of people they feel and not just young people in the company a lot of times people who are experienced and they've been there in for a long long time also feel in the same way this is a vicious cycle that you will get trapped in uh if you don't rectify this right in the beginning so i have seen people who are you know 10 out of 10 in i will not say 10 out of 10 9 out of 10 in programming and engineering capabilities uh but you know 5 out of 10 in communication uh falling behind those who are you know a 7 out of 10 in programming but they are 10 out of 10 in communication so yes if you are 7 out of 10 in programming but you have great communication you will actually get ahead of the ones who are 9 out of 10 programming but are not able to communicate that that's exactly how it happens and uh, those people who are 9 out of 10 in communication they don't improve their communication skills instead every year they see the other people who are not as technically capable uh, growing uh, and uh, getting ahead of them and they become spiteful and uh, they become uh, they are full of resentment they think that uh, management is uh, partial towards them they are not helping them grow but the fact of the matter is that uh, if you're doing great work but you're not able to represent that uh, in a meaningful way uh, then people are not going to be noticing the work that you're doing okay so there i feel that there are four kinds of people in all uh, corporate uh, environments uh, ones who are not able to technically work well and the ones uh, and not communicated as well 
these are the kind of people who get fired in the company uh, you know the ones who get performance reviews and they get moved out okay uh, then they are the ones who work really well and who uh, also communicate really well they are able to represent what they do really well they are able to uh, express their achievements really well these are the kind of people who uh rise up to the ranks really really fast the prodigy kind of people you would see in a company who get promotions 50% or maybe 100% faster cycles and uh, they uh they turn into senior managers uh within 5 6 years of being in the company and they le- they end up uh, leading a vertical or they end up being the ceo of the company as well okay uh then there are two kinds of people the ones who can, who are very good technically but they are not able to communicate and the ones who are able to communicate very well but they are not technically very uh, good at all so uh the ones who uh, are uh, kind of you know technically really well but they are not able to represent their work and not able to show their achievements uh they kind of grow but they grow slowly and uh, they are valuable because uh, you know in in teams people start understanding that you know this guy actually pulls the weight he really codes well but they are never given leadership positions because they are not able to communicate uh, senior management never gets to know about them so other people take credit for their work and uh, they they become really resent uh, resentful towards uh, the 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 work environment and even if they keep on switching companies they will continue to face the same problem there are kind of people who talk too much but they don't actually technically do the work uh so if they are in a company where psycho fancy and uh, you know basically boot licking your managers uh, it works they can survive in such companies for a good amount of time but they are if if they are in a company where uh technical performance really gets measured well then uh, those people also you know they don't really grow much slowly slowly they get phased out okay uh if they only talk about big things and are not able to do it okay but there are some companies where you would see people who are only able to talk about big things but they're not able to do but they're still surviving in the company uh, for a long time that means that company itself has a broken culture and it's not able to measure performance you might want to switch your jobs in that case okay uh, so this turned out to be a pretty big point long one but yeah it's important uh, communication is really, really important and uh, work on it work on being able to write great emails uh whenever you do anything uh, that uh, is worth uh, informing other people as a, an achievement uh, you know write it on your slack or microsoft teams or whatever communication channel that you have uh, you know okay so uh, communication does not mean like calling your manager after 6 pm in the day to chit chat with him not that communication professional communication right one final point which is really important and um, it uh is important because uh this is what gives you ultimate value in the corporate ladder and that's networking okay so make connections uh get to know new people like when you have your uh, lunch in the cafeteria uh start get in touch with uh, people whom you think are like important people in the company i don't just go up to people and uh, you know uh, say randomly hi and try to act like you are in a bar but you know uh, if you find somebody very interesting like somebody is a very senior architect in the company who has developed a system uh, that that runs a major part of the company uh, whenever they're free like really free like they may be just uh, you know uh, sitting and eating food in a corner in a cafeteria you can go and talk to them about system that they have built and learn a few things from them okay uh no one thing that if you go to a person and ask for advice uh that's a great way to make that person talk to you okay uh everybody loves giving advice here i'm giving advice to you guys right so everybody loves giving advice and uh it blows people's egos right so if you uh go to somebody and just ask them advice uh, for anything okay uh, about life or how to grow technically how to learn things uh, they are going to be uh, more open to talking to you and uh, not just giving you advice but also uh, chit chatting okay and networking is very important because uh, in today's world when you join your company it's not necessary that you're going to be staying in that company forever for 10 years 20 years what will happen is 2 or 3 years down the line you might want to switch jobs okay 
and that's when uh, a lot of connections that you have made in your current company would really help because many of them might have had moved to other companies and they might help you with referrals uh, or if you go outside the current company and someday you want to come back your connections in that company would help you get referrals back into that company so every way networking really helps uh, there's a point in your career 5 years 6 years down the line where every opportunity that you get is going to come through networking okay so uh try to capitalize as much time as possible right from the day one about how to network with uh, more people okay so that's about it uh important points to uh, you know uh, take care of in a professional environment at the beginning uh, get a mentor somebody whom you can trust and somebody who can show you the ropes can explain to you how to uh, you know grow within the company um you know don't step on other people's uh, toes uh, keep people informed about what you're working on so people don't feel like you know you are encroaching into their territory uh don't uh, be an attention seeker uh you know, only ask for help after you have exhausted all the means yourself okay be better at uh, communication uh, because only technical adeptness is not going to uh, help you grow and finally uh, utilize as much time as possible for networking hope you can incorporate some of these or all of these tips at your workplace and i hope that some of them uh, can actually help you grow in a professional career uh, if you have any other questions about uh, what to do at work or do not uh, feel free to write them down in the comments i'd love to take them up uh, maybe in some another video uh, sometime down the line thanks so much